guys. Welcome to lecture number two in information management. On this video lecture, we will be talking about the management of data, information, and knowledge. And of course, we will be talking about the concept on the context of information management as a course. So let's start. So on this video lecture, we will be talking about what is data. On the first video lecture that we had, we already have defined data. But then on this video lecture, we are going to revisit the definition of data. The transformation of data into an information using a data process. What is information? What is management? What is information management? The origins of information management. Why is information management important? Goals in information management and the elements of information management together with the information life cycle. All right? So also we will be covering the information resources, the tools of information management. Okay. So let's start with the definition of data. So we have already defined data during our first video lecture and data is defined as the information in raw or an organized form okay so such as alphabets numbers or symbols that refers to or represent conditions ideas or objects okay now what is data so data is limitless from the definition it has no meaning okay so it present or it is present everywhere in the universe okay so wherever you go data could be there okay so most data is being converted into a digital format so this is uh, driven by user demands facilitated by the increase in data processing capabilities lower cost and increased speed of storage affordable and faster network okay now who created the data okay so we have a lot of data that forms into an information but who created or who creates data so data is basically created by an individuals like you like me like us all right and also data can be created by a businesses all right so this data that we're talking to pertains to a video okay it could be a video or an mp3 or an mp4 right so you also have photo book letter and so on so all of this nowadays are translated or converted into a digital format or we call it digital data all right now what are the categories of data so data can be categorized as either structured or unstructured data okay so when you say structured that talks about the databases okay databases or db spreadsheets these are structured okay so when you say unstructured this pertains to forms images audio and movies okay so basically the difference between structured and unstructured structured is managed okay so it is organized that's why it's called structured when you say unstructured it is not yet polished okay it is not yet um organized okay and this includes forms images audio and movies all right now 80 percent of information is unstructured so nowadays with a vast information with the presence of big data okay so we have a lot of information that is unstructured and from the survey or from the researches so it turns out that 80 percent of the information is unstructured okay next so 80 percent is unstructured this, this pertains to audio video invoices rich media web pages documents instant messages all right contracts 
forms, images, manuals, x-rays, check, and so on. So all of this are categorized to be unstructured. Okay, so that includes email attachments and PDF, right? Whereas when you say structured, these are being managed or arranged for searching, right? For storage and discovered databases and spreadsheets, right? Now, let's talk about transformation of data into information using a data process. So how do we transform data into an information? From the definition, data is just a raw materials for, it, uh, for, a, uh, for an information. It doesn't mean anything, all right? You could understand or you could not understand the data when it is given to you, okay? So if you process this data, this becomes an information and now it has a meaning. All right, now let's talk about the transformation of data into information using data processes. So basically, you're gonna have data, all right? So this is the raw materials or the raw facts, okay? It doesn't mean anything. And then it has to go through transformation process. Now this transformation process here is either summarizing the data, averaging the data, selecting part of the data, graphing the data, adding context, adding value, this would lead into an information, okay? So when you organize the data by either doing any of these activities here, that would lead into an information. So when you say information now, as we know it today, it includes both electronic and physical information, okay? So the organizational structure must be capable of managing this information throughout the information life cycle, regardless of the source or format. Okay, so when we say format, we're talking about data, paper, documents, electronic documents, audio, video, etc. for delivery through multiple channels that may include cell phones and web interfaces. All right, so when you process the data, this becomes an information and it has now a meaning. Okay, now let us define information. Okay. So I had given you a glimpse of the definition of information or what we mean by information, okay? So aside from the fact that this is an organized form of data, okay? That is what you call information, a processed data, all right? Okay, so the definition of information includes data that have been processed so that they are meaningful. As what I've said earlier, when you say data, it has no meaning, all right? So data have been processed for a purpose and data have been in interpreted and understood by the recipient, okay? So next, let's talk about management, okay? Since we already have defined information and information is a process data, let's talk about management now. What is management, okay? So management means that the organization of and control over the structure, processing and delivery of information. All right. So that is the definition of management. Okay. So what is management? So according to Teo, okay, management has three different meanings. First, management is a noun. Okay. It refers to a group of managers. All right, so management as a process, this refers to a functions of management. Example, planning, organizing, directing, controlling, etc. All right, and management as a discipline, it refers to the subject of management. Okay, so management is an individual or a group of individuals that accept responsibilities to run the organization. So they plan, organize, direct, and control all the essential activities of the organization. So management does not do the work themselves, all right? So they motivate others to do the work and coordinate, example, bring together all the work for achieving the objective of the organization, okay? So that is what we meant by management, okay? 
So management brings together all the six M's. All right. So what are the six M's? So first, men and women. All right. Money, machines, materials, methods, and market. So they use these resources for achieving the objectives of the organization, such as maximum sales and profits, okay, business expansion, and in the university, in the school, okay, so we provide quality education to the students. Well, that is part of the management. All right. Now let's talk about the history of management, specifically information management. Okay, so throughout the 1970s, this was largely limited to files, file maintenance, and the life cycle management of a paper-based files, other media, and records. With the proliferation of information technology starting in the 1970s, the job of information management took to a new light. Okay. It also began to include the field of data maintenance. No longer was information management a simple job that could be performed by almost everyone, all right, or anyone. An understanding of the technology involved and the theory behind it became necessary. All right. So next is as information storage shifted to electronic means. This became more and more difficult. So by the late 1990s, when information was regularly disseminated across computer networks and by other electronic means, network managers, in a sense, became information managers. Okay? So who are these information managers? So those individuals found themselves tasked with increasingly complex tasks, hardware and software. So with the latest tools available, information management has become a powerful resource and a large expense of many organizations. All right? Okay, so we already have defined information and we also defined different approaches or different uh, meaning of management in different fields, okay? Now let's talk about information management or IM. So basically this is your course, right? Okay. So information management, this sometimes involves those who have a stake in or a right to that information. So management means the organization of and control over the structure, processing and delivery of information. Okay. So basically IM is the collection and management of information from one or more sources and the distribution of that information to one or more audiences. Okay, so it's not limited to students, all right? So all could be part or being part of an audience, all right? Okay, so another is application of management techniques to collect information communicate it with an outside organization and process it to enable managers to make quicker and better decisions. So information as we know it today includes both electronic and physical information. Okay, So the organizational structure must be capable of managing this information throughout the information life cycle regardless of the source or format. Okay. So format could be data, paper documents, electronic documents, audio, video, etc. Okay, so for delivery through multiple channels, that may include cell phones, uh, web interfaces, and other platforms. All right. Next, so management of information resources. So design of information technology components. Okay. So analysis of information processing procedures and deriving knowledge from an information corpus. Okay, so what is corpus? Okay, or this is pronounced as corpse. All right, so it, this pertains to a large collection of writings of a specific kind or on a specific subject. Okay, so in business or management studies, it has similar connotations to technology management. Okay, so I remember in our post uh, degree, okay, 
So we have the course technology management. We even have this program. Okay, so PhD in technology management. All right. So in business or management studies, it has similar connotations to technology management with an emphasis on the relationship of information technology to business performance and competitiveness. All right. Okay, so why information storage? So with a lot of information nowadays, okay, so we have a big data. So of course, we need information storage. Okay, so we have to have a lot of storage or capacity to store all these informations available. All right. So in the digital universe, the information explosion. Okay, so in the 21st century, is this this is an information era okay information is being created at ever increasing rate so information has become critical for success okay we live in an on command on demand world for example uh, social networking sites emails video and photo sharing websites okay online shopping and search engines all right so um, these are all sources of data and we have to have a lot of storage or we have to have a lot of capacity to store this information okay next is information management is a big challenge okay organizations seek to store protect and optimize all right so a, a very good um, career, okay, after you graduated from college is that you, you could be part of a team that manages information, okay? So because we have different uh, titles or careers in the data, database, okay, so that includes database administration or database administrator, you've got this uh, data mining, okay, so data warehousing, these are the or these are just some of the careers that you could choose okay to be part of the information um, arena all right so again these are the challenge okay so a big challenge for the organization who maintains a lot of data or big data so store protect the data and optimize for utilization all right Next, why is IM or information management important? So managing information is important to an organization because it allows for increased knowledge, decreased inefficiency, and better creation and implementation of action plans to address areas for opportunities. So without successful management of information, it is almost guaranteed that an organization will fail. All right. Next, reasons are described in three categories. So managing your information saves you money. Managing your information makes you money. All right. And managing your information keeps you out of trouble. Okay. Next, what are the key components of information management? Okay, so we have several. Some books only has four. But on this uh, demonstration or video lecture, I used five, all right? So these are people, culture, process, content, and technologies. So in some books, they don't include culture. So they only have people, process, content, and technology. Okay, so information management has these main components, okay? So let's start with people. People, not only those involved in information management, but also the creators and users of data and information. So these are people, okay? End users, uh, database administrators, uh, sources of information, okay? So the one who provides information. So we, we, we could consider them as people, okay? Next is culture, okay? So the, lit the literature regarding information culture focuses on the relationship between individuals and information in their work. 
Okay? So information culture is a culture that is conducive to effective information management where the value and utility of information in achieving operational and strategic goals is recognized where information forms the basis of organizational decision making and information technology is readily exploited as an enabler for an effective information systems. So information culture is a part of the whole organizational culture. Okay? So it is only by understanding that the organization that progress can be made with information management activities. All right? So next is a process, process and policies, all right? So the rules that determine who has access to what, all right? Steps how to store and secure information must be stored and secured, and time frames for achieving or deleting. Okay, so these are the policies and processes. The next component is um, let's move first on technology. Okay, technology the physical items, computers, filing cabinets, etc., that store data and information and any software used, these are the technologies. So this includes the internet, the network, all right, the repository, these are all technologies, okay? Now, how about content, okay? Content or data and information. So what the rest of the components use is a data or a content, okay? Or an information, all right? So these are the key components of information management. So people, culture, process, and policies. You've got content, data, and information, and technology. Right? Okay, so next is information resources. Okay? So we have a lot of information resources, but we could um, classify and uh, organize them into four, right? So this, uh, these are data, records, multimedia, and texts. Okay, so next is goals of information management. So the first one is supply work, business, and consumption process with information. Okay, so this is the basic goal. Work cannot be done without required information. Right. Next is improve and speed up business, work, and consumption process through information use and efficient information processing. So information is not only one of the inputs to the work process. By improving information supply and its processing, the whole process usually can be made more efficient. Right. So next is create and maintain competitive advantage through new IT-based work and business processes. So often, information technologies allow reorganization of work in completely new ways and creation of totally new businesses. Okay? Next is efficient use of organization's information assets. So while previous goals come from activity okay, or process, this goal statement invites to think about organization's information not as side product of activity, but as the central resource information, not activity may be a real thing. All right. Okay. And reduce unnecessary complexity of information processing. Protect against information overload. Okay. So what is information overload? So in a student's perspective, information overload is if you are provided with a lot of information, okay, so for instance, you are bombarded with a lot of information. So sometimes, okay, so our capacity is full and there are some instances where in what we are being told, we cannot totally understand it because we are already full, all right? So that's information overload. Too much information for processing, okay, is what you call information overloading. All right, next. So what are the key challenges in information management? Okay, 
So you've got exploding digital universe, right? So in order to frame an effective information management policy, businesses needs to consider the following key challenges. So the first one is exploding digital universe. Okay, so what is this? So the rate of information growth is increasing exponentially. Duplication of data to ensure high availability and repurposing has also contributed to the increase of information growth. All right? So next is increasing dependency on information. So the strategic use of information plays an important role in determining the success of a business and provides competitive advantages in the marketplace. All right? So next is changing the value of information. So information that is valuable today may become less important tomorrow. All right, agree? I'll repeat. So information that is valuable today may become less important tomorrow. The value of information often changes over time. So we will be talking about it on the information life cycle. So I just introduced the basis on the video lecture one, but in here, we are going to thoroughly discuss, okay, so the information life cycle, all right? Next is, let's talk about today's information corpus, or corpse, okay? So this include files. Most sizable companies have huge stores of electronic files scattered throughout the enterprise, a legacy of desktop networking, okay? Letters, memos, reports, spreadsheets, data files or databases files and presentations, all right? So next is databases. So companies usually maintain a number of databases on several different hardware and software platform, okay? Email, most employees communicate with email and much of an enterprise internal and external business communication is done via email. And also there, is an, there are attachments on it. Okay, so next is instant messaging. This is becoming the way employees talk to one another in real time. Okay, electronic publishing. What is this? So most companies produce printed materials such as catalogs, brochures, or flyers, contact sheets, what else? Our product, uh, product specification sheets, newsletter, okay, so business reports, etc. Also, an increasing amount of information exists only in electronic format. Example, web pages, PDF documents, intranets, etc. All right? Okay. So, next is, what are the elements of information management? So, first, each origin in a variety of fields that have had to do traditionally with the acquisition, organization, maintenance, and use of documents. So archives and record management and librarianship and information science. Okay, especially in special librarianship and information work. All right. So next is second, the development of information technology and its growing application to all the aspects of information management has been a strong formative influence. The cost of computer-based system draw direct attention to the issues and value of information and cost-benefit relationship in the development of information system and services. All right? So finally, the wide application of information ideas developed in the business schools, okay, so widely accepted in business and given prominence in the business press and in media ge in general, okay? And applied increasingly in public sector organization has resulted in the acceptance of such concepts as strategic planning, cost-benefit analysis, resource management, and marketing, okay? Now, information requirements. So the study of information needs has occupied information science for almost 50 years, right? So, but other disciplines, notably computer science, have also had an interest, okay? 
So all aspects of information management must be grounded in consideration of the information requirements or information needs of customers or clients or the information system and services. All right. Next, let's talk about the information lifecycle. Okay. So the information lifecycle includes create, store, use, share, archive, and destroy. Okay. So the information lifecycle is the change in the value of information over time. So when we first created it, okay, it often has highest value and used frequently. Okay. So as data ages, it is accessed less frequently and is of less value to the organization. So understanding the information life cycle helps to deploy appropriate storage infrastructure according to the changing value of information. Okay? So information like the business goes through various phases in each life cycle. So since information is required at every stage of the business on a daily basis, it becomes imperative to understand each phase of the database life cycle. Okay? So for simplicity, we can provide information life cycle management into several phases starting from data acquisition to data removal. Yes. Okay? It is important to remove the data once it is of no use as it is acquired. Okay? Let us explore these phases in detail. Okay? So let's start with great create or capturing data okay so data enters the business through data capture okay so it could be data that are acquired from reliable outside resources data entry and data reception so this information is used for comparisons and for predictions the data generated by the business has to be input diligently to be processed by the ERP okay, or business intelligence software. So typically, large volumes of information are generated by the organization on a daily basis in various forms. So information also comes from various devices such as mobile phones and IoT enabled devices. Okay, so IoT technology is an un uh, outstanding source of reliable data for businesses. So every business has its own ways of capturing information, okay? So it determines the information that needs to be captured and then determines the methods in which it can be accomplished. So the banking sector inputs the information and also pulls it from devices as, as uh, smartphones, POS sweeping machines, ATMs, etc. okay? So the telecom sector collects user information from each networks. So in governance, a lot of information is collected from outside resources apart from those being input at the offices. Okay? So a business can collect data from various external sources for research and analysis. Okay? So next is store or preserving data. Okay? So the data that's captured by the business needs to be stored diligently. It is quite challenging to store various types of bulk information or big data that the business acquires, generates and receives from devices all have to be preserved to be used later for processing or publishing. Okay? And data should be uh, ideally stored in a categorized way for easier access. Okay, so where and how data is being preserved is important as it is determined or as it determines the accessibility and time to access. So data can be stored in tiers or in parallel servers to provide faster access. So once the data is stored, it can then be grouped to ease access. So where data is stored, it has to be secure. So data security is one of the most important features to consider from this phase onwards until it is discarded. Okay? 
So security and privacy of information are essential for business to succeed and sustain. Particularly in banking, healthcare, telecom, and governance sectors, data security is utmost important. Okay? So next phase is grouping data. Okay? So data synthesis or grouping data is a comparatively new phase in information lifecycle management. So grouping data lets you quick access to compiled information such as totals, average, uh, means, etc. Okay? And many important metrics are formed and stored as group of information which makes further analysis and processing much easier and faster. So grouping data is an essential when dealing with large volumes of information. So when you have business in multiple locations that generates bulk information on a daily basis, it becomes very difficult for the head office to handle all this bulk information. So for example, take the telecom, banking, insurance, retail chains, and governance sectors. There's always bulk data that is generated, which is grouped at the end of the day or periodically for convenience. Right? So next is use or processing data. So data are collected, categorized, stored, and grouped. These are used to process it to make it useful. Okay. So the employee attendance, for instance, these are data that are collected on a daily basis. This is used to process payroll, right? And the call details for every customer in the telecom field is used to analyze the usage and to form better marketing strategies. Okay? And the banking industry uses the transaction data and process it regularly to understand the transaction patterns and to track the money flow. So many advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence, business intelligence, enterprise resource processing, Intelligent automation, uh, what else? Robotics, process automation, machine learning, uh, virtual reality, artificial reality, etc. are used to process information depending upon the business requirements. So sometimes the simplest form of processing such as document management system or database systems also help processing information. So many businesses use legacy software for data processing. All right. Next phase is share or publishing the data. Okay. So the information that's collected, stored, grouped, and processed is used for publishing as reports to manage and public. Okay. To management and public. Now, every business publishes its information to its stakeholders, including employees, vendors, and investors. So the financial stability, external communication, and other details are published on various mediums to reach the right audience at regular intervals. So many tools are used for business or, for, or by businesses for publishing and reporting information. So data sharing is also important. Okay, this is part of publishing as the aim of publishing data is to make it available for the intended audiences. Okay. So businesses publishing the financial statements, offering the market insights, etc. are popular forms of data publishing that we see on a daily basis. Okay. So next is archive or archiving the data. Okay. So data archival is another important aspect of information lifecycle management. So when there's a bulk information being handled on a daily basis or regularly, it makes storage and processing highly expensive. So it slows down data processing and publishing. So to counter this, data is regularly checked and archived. So archiving is done by completing or by creating data subsets. So every set of information archived is represented by each subset. So archiving stores the information that's not immediately used separately from the active data storage environment. 
So this makes the Active Data Directory more space and makes processing much faster as lesser information is involved in processing. So data archiving makes data storage and retrieval more efficient. Okay, so the last one is destroy or removing data. So data has to be periodically checked and removed when obsolete. Certain classified information has to be immediately removed from the main data storage and stored secured in a separate environment, especially maintained for that. So data tends to get obsolete over time. Such obsolete data becomes an overhead to data storage and processing and hence is carefully sorted and removed periodically from the data server. All right. So data entering the business and leaving it may uh, happen over many months or years. Okay, So sometimes, apart from the old information is grouped and stored and the base information is removed. So this makes sure that the consolidated information is used where required. So data goes through a range of transformations during its life cycle in every business. So even though the bases may be named differently, businesses, okay, information lifecycle management is essential for business to make the most of the information it captures and generates. All right? So next is information management lifecycle. Okay, so what do you have here? So basically, the lifecycle process in the information management is now automated and it should be flexible right so from the classification of data application based on organizational rules or organizations rules to the implementation integrated management and organize or organization okay so the implementation is automated and flexible so it adapts okay so to the organization depending on the situations right okay so next is the tools in information management okay so information audit so the idea of information audit is to derive from financial audits in accounting so which as Ellis et al note are generally compliance audits undertaken to ensure that the organization is adhering to proper fiscal and legal standards in its financial management okay some of the tools of information management are those derived from the fields that have contributed to its development for example classification and information retrieval from librarianship and information science database design and development from computer science the document lifecycle from record management okay communication audits from organizational psychology and what else? Uh, cost benefit analysis and value assessment from business management. Okay. So, also on the information audit, information audits takes a more the character or advice or characters of advisory audits, which are more concerned with informing users of existing systems and practices with assessing the appropriateness of existing systems, standards, and practices to the organization's goal or objectives. So next is information mapping. Okay, so this is a method of bringing together current learning research and instructional technology into a comprehensive materials development and presentation technology to improve technical communication. So information mapping is a system of principles and procedures for identifying, categorizing, interrelating, and sequencing, okay? And presenting graphically information required for learning and reference. So more specifically, information mapping is a method for written communication as it is currently presented in textbooks, program instructions, books, Okay, so technical manuals and various kinds of paper documents for complex projects. Okay, 
So information mapping improves the current method for doing the learning and reference work itself. So preparing learning reference materials and maintaining, updating such learning materials. Okay. So next is communication audit. Now, what is communication audit? So the communication audit predates information management as a tool for investigation of communication in the field of organization theory. Okay. So the role of communication audit was explored by Booth okay, during their um, 1986 and 1988 okay, note. And more recently, by Potter in 1990, who categorized communication audits as being used to measure the effectiveness of introducing IT in an organization. Interpersonal communications, communications between management and employees, communication between the students and the faculty or the professors, okay, and the effectiveness of organizational communications or public relations activities. So these are the tools in information management, okay? Information audit, information mapping, and communication audit. Okay. Next, what are the benefits of information management? So first, of course, is improved utilization. Okay. Simplified management, simplified backup and recovery of data and information, maintaining compliance, lower total cost of ownership okay so these are just some of the benefits of information management and maybe we have a lot more uh, benefits depending on the organization okay so it has come to an end of this video lecture so thank you very much for watching and listening have a great day